this actually can be used as the creation stage practice. And I'm saying that out of personal experience. When I was a young boy, I always received empowerments from different lamas and then the lamas would always explain very elaborately the creation stage, the visualization of the day team. And then I felt that a beginning practitioner cannot really clearly visualize the creation stage. When one attempts to do so, it seems that thoughts even increase. So I asked the question to the Lama and said that it is possible, however, to visualize the seed syllable. And when I just visualize the seed syllable, there is no self. So what is the purpose of the creation stage and the visualization of the seed syllable? Ultimately, we must become free of that thought of a self. And when you think of the seed syllable, in that moment there is no self. So I asked this question to the Lama and he responded that it would be appropriate to only visualize the seed syllable. And anyone, any beginning practitioner can visualize just the seed syllable, even if we cannot visualize the entire creation stage. So how we do that is that we first cultivate the right motivation. We cultivate love and compassion for sentient beings. And then from within a state of altruism, in an instant, without allowing another thought to intervene, we visualize the seed syllable. And the thought of a self transforms into the shrimp. The consciousness becomes the shrimp. And the, however long you are able to visualize the seed syllable, for that time there is no imprint of a self. The self does not exist. And if you do not think about the self, then there's also no thought of another. Therefore, there is no thoughts that grasp at a duality of self and others. If you do not think about yourself, you also do not think about that other person. So the visualization of the seed syllable makes up for the creation stage. Even if you do not visualize the entire deity in the beginning, it is sufficient if you just visualize the seed syllable. In general, the visualization of the day team becomes the antidote to self-grasping. So in the beginning, therefore, it is sufficient to just focus on the seed syllable. And then later, when that becomes stable and clear, you can gradually begin with the visualization of the day team. Because the appearance of the deity is, in fact, very meaningful. The deity that appears with different colors and implements and different attributes, ornamentations and so forth, each of them have a specific meaning. The outer elements, the attributes of the day team represent an inner quality that arises from the union of emptiness and compassion from the deity's mind. So the outer elements are symbols of the inner qualities of the deity's mind. And so therefore, deities appear with different ornamentations, the peaceful and the wrathful deities and so forth. And it is important to understand the significance of these attributes.在灌顶的时候我们常常会有修升起赤地那灌顶的过程通常是相当繁杂的
，因为当我们观想种子字的时候，我们可以比较的专注，没有了自我，没有这个我的概念。那我们想要我们在修法，在修这个升起智力，主要也是修到就是无我。那上师给我的回答是说可以的。所以，尤其是对初学来者来讲，这是一种方便的法门。你们可以只观想这个种子智。那么，我们我们在这个修法的过程中当中，要有长养这个正确的一种发心，在利他的发心的这种基础之上呢，不受干扰的、专注的来做呃观想来修法。在这个时候，无我，无念。那因为你无我，也没有任何的杂念呢，自然就无他。那么也没有任何的念头来束缚你，来让你造成一种自他对立的二元对划分的这种情况。因为无我就没有他，那这个时候，这个睡字，这个种子字可以当升起次第的观想，只观想睡，就这样就可以了。我们要知道说，为什么要观想本尊？其实，在观想本尊的过程当中，有一个很好的一个呃结果作用，就是能够对治我们自己的执着、我执。所以，对初学者来讲，可以从观种子智开始。等到你对这个修法比较熟悉了，你可以慢慢的来观想本尊。我们知道本尊的各种特质、外表的各种装束啊、特质等等的，呃。都是它有很深的含义的，每个本尊都有外内密三层的意义。那外表的一些表象的一些装饰、璎珞等等的，都是反映在内，反映出它内在空杯双运的这种特质。所以本尊的外相，不同的本尊外相有不，有有不同的本尊外相看起来都是不一样的。那我们对这个这些外向，它实际所含的意义，应该进一步做了解。嗯，现在到老古车里头，老不几人忙不要的，这个老旧做的呢，那三几个，千把的，再把一个，你把千不要的，几百的，变成三十三十三十九呢，三五年的了，同行的，三十哪个人出来有嘛的？这个别的东西在采用过来，讲三出三的，然后来有呢，哪样错了都也没了，哪样的这个的东西，嗯，谁也没了，得到多，得到了这的东西上面的东西，三出三别的三是，呃，哪样就也没把三张拍弄上去，别的，得到了不几斤上去，那这些人花得到差不多的。So, for example, the Samboga Kayas are adorned with many jewels, jewel ornamentations, and these also are representations of the great power that the deities have, and that is the power of knowledge and love. For example, the ornament of gold, it represents the unchanging nature, something that never changes. That is bodhicitta. If one possesses bodhicitta within one's mind stream, it cannot be spoiled or changed in any way. It has this power, and that is represented by the jewel of gold, for example, or the diamond, and different other jewel ornamentation. They are the representation or the symbol of the bodhicitta within the mind. 那我们在看报身佛的，呃，报身的时候呢，我们一般都会看到珠宝庄严，种种璎珞珠宝来庄严啊，他、呃、其身。那这个是一种表法的，呃，一种呈现。那它主要呈现就是本尊非常大力的一种智慧跟爱慈悲心跟爱心。那比如说，很多时候都有用金。金饰用金子来呃做的种种庄严、种种装饰等等，那这金子所代表就是不变的本质。什么是不变的本质？在这边指的就是菩提心。
那么如果说一个人有一个菩提心的话，他就比较不就不会受到这个染污。这些到了，你说错，因为是光景的，嗯，光照的，拉他光可以干啥？你看这娃干的这些呢，别人没到我都不注意呢，实际上就没到看起来的吧。我说，光看上去没到个干部差呢，但我说个长寿生活绝对是不没那么简单，没到干部看嘛，就干部在是差的要的。再到不是我说长寿生活有的起码他的身体是进步的，动不起大不也没了。你如果说长寿就结尾，你的啥原因还好用的？多年红结的结尾，嗯，这里的这里这里哪块给这个这里？别把他打了点那个，是，我，是这里我这儿没办法打的，因为，我说，我这儿干不的，我到山区生活中的，大家一定要的，山区生活一通过的，你说呢？对，我到农村，上农村上班，这里我爸呢，他说什么我的，当当问我呢，山区生活一直有嘛七八年吧，空了呗，是可以的，这啥子？谁把包的你妈个背？谁把包的打完个背？你们饿了点，就打完了我就过来。第三个刮擦过来子。So one visualizes oneself as ten vesic, and so here we must understand the relation between the deity that we visualize and then ourselves, the practitioner who visualizes, who practices. It is just like a flower. All the Buddhas are like an open flower, a blossoming flower. And we practitioners are like the flower bud. The moment we give rise um, to bodhicitta, it will open up. We have obtained this precious human body as a result of having cultivated bodhicitta. And that is like um, that, that precious human body is like the bud of a flower that is not yet opened. But then, the moment we give rise to bodhicitta, we give rise to love and compassion. This flower bud will ripen and will blossom, and we will understand the qualities of the day team. That is the union of emptiness and compassion. So then, um, in page seventeen. Then it says, in space in front, upon a seat of lotus and moon, appears a red tree gleaming with light. So, <clears throat> so then in just an instant, in space in front, you visualize a cushion, a seat of lotus and um, moon, and there appears a red um, tree, a syllabum, blazing with light. So first, the white syllable, the previous one, represents the conventional bodhicitta, where there is still a dualistic um, thought of Buddhas, there's the Buddhas and there's the sentient beings. It refers to the conventional bodhicitta of love and compassion. Mm -hmm. And then there is the red three syllable, that is the um, seed essence of the Buddha Amitabha, and that represents the ultimate bodhicitta, within which Buddhas and sentient beings are one, are actually inseparable. That is also represented by the sun and by the moon. The sun represents the, the ultimate or the stream, and then the moon, um, the, the white um, shri syllable, the conventional bodhicitta. Um, so this is how we must understand the, you know, the relation between the, your own visualization and the one in front, and as the light um, begin to radiate, that is the meaning of those light, the colors of that light. Namma 
就好像一个盛开的花，那么众生呢，就好像是个花苞一样。